inspired you to write Wealth Supremacy? I've become discouraged. I have spent uh, more than 30 years working for a democratic economy and as a journalist and a theorist and a consultant. And I have tracked the work of, of literally thousands of visionaries who are building what we need, you know, different kinds of banks, different kinds of companies, different kinds of investments. That work is so far advanced. I think people, it would blow people's minds if they could, could mm -hmm. begin to grasp how much has been worked out about building a different economy. And yet things are getting worse and not better ecologically, uh, politically, in terms of, of, of wealth inequality for people of, of color, for women, for working people, things are worse. And, uh, you know, we're, we're heading into a, a massive crisis. I call it the problem that we're not talking about yet. We're not talking about the fact that wealth is creating a lot of the crises that we're in. And so I kind of got mad. <laughs> You know, I say, uh, and Kelly, your opening was so was so remarkable. I feel like almost like my work is done, and I can go home. We'll just let Kelly, <laughs> we'll just let Kelly carry on the dialogue because you really get it. And um, so we're not we're not talking about this deep bias that the whole the whole thing is 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 upholding wealth. And um, I wanted to turn and shine a light on that and say, this is the problem we need to start talking about because it's it's creating multiple crises. Kelly talked about this, that, you know, Women's Way, we're working to really advance gender and racial equity, right, and help close the gender wealth gap. But in order to create a more equitable economic system where all women thrive, we need to understand how our current econo economic system works, which Kelly's was talking about, right? So we cannot fix a problem we cannot name. In your book, you wrote that we participate in systems change when we change our minds mm -hmm. and changing our minds begins with naming. You go on to say that naming is a way of breaking the silences that enfold and entrap us, mm -hmm. a way of shining light into the unseen ways that culture and language shape our way of seeing the world, rendering our very lives invisible, even to ourselves, really deep. So naming really shapes reality. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about two key concepts that I think that you write about in your book that people really need to understand. And of course, one is wealth supremacy and capital bias. How do you define these and what are some examples of them in action? Let me back up for a moment and talk about this issue of naming and breaking the silences. I mean, I'm old enough that I lived through second wave feminism. I, it was just out of college. When, when feminism arrived in, in Missouri, where I grew up, and it just it completely blew my mind that, you know, sexism had existed for thousands of years. And by naming it and explaining it, um, I just saw the world in a completely different way. And I learned from feminist scholars of language how language completely shaped our reality. I mean, just use the word mankind, right? And he was the generic. And and women, when I was a, a, a younger woman, you were either miss or missus. You were either married or not married. So language completely shaped our idea of who we were. Well, that really taught me a lot. And I took that, uh, that intellectual tradition and I turned it on, on capitalism. And I talk about how language uh, shapes how we see the economy. And um, I'll, I'll just say quickly, for example, uh, billionaires have more worth than deadbeats who can't pay their bills, you know, so someone's net worth right there that tells us who matters and who doesn't. Okay, so, and, and I deliberately am playing off of, of course, white supremacy when I devised this term wealth supremacy, because what I'm trying to say is the whole thing is illegitimate. You know, we know that racism is illegitimate. We know that sexism is Ill Ill illegitimate. They're not gone, but by taking their legitimacy, we have really undercut them. And that's what I'm after here. I'm trying to show us how we can undercut the legitimacy of this system. So wealth supremacy, what is that? That's a cultural norm about who matters and who doesn't, who rightly holds power and who doesn't. I mean, we know the wealthy control politics, control culture, um, but, you know, they're the rock stars of our society. They, you know, they, we write about them. So wealth supremacy is this, this cultural norm. And then, so um, 
Capital bias is how wealth supremacy is carried out. How do you keep the wealthy on top? and comfortable and rolling in, in more and more money every year? Well, you do it because the system favors capital and capital is the active base of wealth. That's what we can think of it as. When you put money to work, which of course we do through investing, no, nobody sits on a pile of cash, it's always invested. Um, then, the, then the rules of the system favor capital. They empower capital. Uh, they they seek to grow capital. Capital is the is the whole center of the system, and that's why you know I use the phrase capital hyphenism. <laughs> so we have racism, sexism, and capitalism. They're all systems of bias. Mm -hmm.